Skirt Skirt, what up guys? It is your boy t Ra with Skirt Speedsoft. Um, today I'm doing a build video. Um, I'm going to go over my 5.1 high cap of build. Um, I get a lot of questions about it. So I'm going to go over pretty much every part that's in it. Um, I'm going to break it down between the upper and the lower. Um, to me that means the slide is the upper. Anything below the, anything under the slide, so frame down to the mag wall is basically the lower. Um, I'll be going over what's in it, why I use it, maybe some parts I tried that I didn't like, and I'm just gonna go over everything in the build. And if you guys see me looking to the left or to the right, I have stuff kind of all over to show parts that I've tried that I may or may not like. Also, I have a list of parts in case I forget something. So if you guys see me looking off, it's just for that. Also, I did take the liberty of taking the guide right out to start the video um, because I don't feel like you guys wanna watch me try to get it out. So. Yeah, so this is it. This is my 5.1 build. Um, this is currently set up for outdoor. And what that means is I don't have the tracer unit on it because I don't need the tracer unit for outdoor. Um, so this is just a standard 5.1, um, just a regular 5.1. Um, started as a TM. I actually got the, the stock gun bone stock, still the orange tip on it. And this slide, I think it's the York 3. Don't quote me on that, York 2 style. Um, I actually got both of them on hop up for a hundred dollars shipped. I could not believe it. I thought it was a scam, but the guy shipped it and I was all for it. So showed up, started building it. So let's break it down. Let's start with the slide. So I guess taking it apart, we can go over the first part that you do when you take our slide, your slide catch, which we all know is just for decorative and to hold the slide in there um, once you get crazy building. I use a KJW extended one, works good. It, it came in my accelerator high cap book that I sold all the parts to, except for this one. Um, so I just keep it, probably get it anodized just to have it fit the build a little bit more. And then, so starting with the slide, um, we'll go over the guide rod real quick just cause it's already out. The slide. The slide. Um, I've experimented a lot with different options with this, I'm pretty sure everyone has. Um, I'm actually still experimenting with it, haven't really found my perfect setup for it yet, but we are currently working on it. Um, I first have a AIP 5.1 guide plug. Um, I can't, I don't really run the 4.3 because of how the slide is. If I was running the 4.3, it doesn't go all the way into the guide holder. Oh no. What the heck? There. Sorry. It doesn't go all the way up. So it actually sticks halfway through and it wiggles really bad. And then the guide rod will actually hit up here once in a while or hit up here once in a while. So I don't really like that for that reason. So I picked this up. It's cool. It fits the, the cuts of the slide and I like being able to see the guide rod on the spring. So fix that. Next up is the AIP 120 spring. I don't go any higher. I don't go any lower. Um, I don't think, I think once you go higher, you're going to start breaking shit and I've seen people break shit. Even off of 140s, I've seen people have their guide plug holders just fucking crack. So don't go any higher, don't go any lower for me personally. 120 is all you need. Unless you have a really heavy slide, then yeah, you can go a little bit higher. Or if you're running a full, like the KJW Accelerator High Kappa is a fucking pig, you can definitely run it on there. So for my short stroke setup, um, I actually run the Airsoft Gateway SCS short stroke kit. Um, I really like it. Um, I have half of it in here, half of it in my other build. Um, and that's the cool part is short stroke kits. You can pretty much figure out what you like exactly. Um, these work perfect for me. They're cheap. Um, Airsoft Gateway is pretty fast shipping too. And then the guide rod. If you guys don't know what this is, this is a Cow Cow RM1 guide rod, pretty sure that's right. And what makes this special is two things. It can either be a 4.3 or a 5.1. Um, they actually have the extension piece. We have a shorter piece in here, if I can find it. Here it is. You have the shorter one, so you can make it the 5.4.3 length or the 5.1. And I think that is a great deal out of the box being able to have both. Um, if you move your parts around a lot, instead of having to keep buying guide rods, stupid stuff like that, it's definitely nice. Um, I got the rainbow color. 
um, just because it was the most, I think it fit the build pretty good. It has some red, has some purple in there, which is definitely kind of where my build went. And what makes this so special, if you guys don't know anything, it does have the hole for a 1911 style hop-up unit, um, in case you guys are wondering. But it actually has a built-in spring mechanism right around in here. And so when your slide comes back, this actually has a slight dampening to it. Now I have the stiffest spring in there um, just cause that works best for me. But if you run, you can run a softer spring for a little bit softer recoil. Um, so you can change it if you want to feel more recoil, faster cycling, it all just depends. It comes with three different springs. I run the hardest um, just because I like the faster reset and it just feels pretty good to me. So that's my guide rod setup. Um, if I don't feel like I'm still like experimenting with that um, if I don't feel like running that just a plain Jane AIP um, and I actually glue mine together I know some people don't do that some people do um, I just put a little bit of super glue in there as you can tell it's pretty beat up um, from where the slide can kind of tap into it so I've been experimenting with that on how to buff it out and shim it out a little bit better so that's the guy rod setup we'll go over the slide real quick um, I'll take the barrel assembly and the hop-up assembly out real quick. So I might as well do this now. Um, if you guys couldn't tell, um, I didn't undo any screws, which means I have the Airsoft Masterpiece style outer barrel. Um, the cow cows have two grip, grub screws that grab on the hop-up unit. I like the Airsoft Masterpiece. Um, it works really good. I picked it up on LA Kappa Customs for Black Friday. Um, shout out real quick. While I'm on that, shout out to LA Cabot Customs where 90% of these parts were purchased. Um, they've been working super hard and making sure everybody gets good quality parts and builds. So make sure to check them out at lacabacustoms.com. So yeah, back to the barrel. Um, it's just a super simple threaded outer barrel um, from Airsoft Masterpiece. And I like the color. I think the purple is a good color. Um, not too shiny, not too basic. Um, I think it looks really good. But I am also have a Sanctus Customs outer barrel on the way for this to kind of experiment to see if I like the 3D printed barrel more. My 4.3 is a 3D printed barrel and to me I like the sound of the, it's kind of weird, I like the sound of the slide hitting the 3D printed barrel in the back where the chamber on the slide hits it. Um, I like that versus the aluminum clanking when you get the um, so definitely gonna experiment with a 3d printed barrel in my 5.1 um this is just a random thread protector that came with my 4.3 don't know my, i don't know what brand it is um but it's got a pretty good gold finish on it it's pretty knurled so it's easy to get on and off and then for my thread adapter i run a we super cheap five dollar adapter um my local store carries them so if i ever need a new one they're super cheap for a thread adapter, I don't need anything flashy. 95% of it gets covered anyways. Um, I run two O-rings on one on each side to keep a nice snug fit. And in indoor, to make it my indoor build, I run the G&G UVT 1.0 and 2.0 tracer units. Um, I love these, these are my favorite tracer units. I highly recommend these to anybody looking for a tracer unit. And these are my favorite. Um, so, yeah. On to the, we'll do the hop up next. Um, and then I'll go over the side real quick. Um, so this to me is the most crucial part of any airsoft gun. Um, AEG, gas building, I don't give a shit. If you can't get the BBs down range far enough, and I mean more like 120 feet, um, and accurately, then what's the point of even trying to play if your BBs are just plopping 20, 50 feet in front of you? So hop-ups are crucial. Um, it is just a standard maple leaf unit um i actually really like the maple leaf units over the airsoft masterpiece don't know why i've had way better luck with these i think fitment's a little bit better for me um and it's never broken on me in the year and a half i've been using it um and also matched with the just a basic basic 6.03 maple leaf barrel um i have the nine ball barrel i have the crazy jet barrel um this one just seems to be a good old reliable to me running a stock arm with an eye key. Um, pretty weird setup on that. Um, and I'll explain kind of how I can run the stock arm with the eye key. And it's because of the, well, the bucking real quick is also a Decepticon 60 degree. Um, I don't think you need to go any higher for 
the bucking. Um, I shoot fours out of this with this exact top up set up at 250 feet. We measured it, our dirt field has ranges measured out and I was clearing 250 feet. That's the farthest they have readings out to. So they were going a little bit past that. So I could probably get 275 feet out of it. Um, I really like this setup, but the most crucial part to me in any of these builds that I wish more people would recommend or more people play around with, because not a lot of people know about it, I don't think, is a the nine ball pop-up wheel. It's actually a 540 degree wheel. Now, what that means, if you guys don't know, is I have a stock, or not stock, but an airsoft masterpiece unit wheel. Um, this is 180 degrees, which means I can go a little bit left, a little bit right. Pretty sure that was backwards to you guys, but whatever. Um, this is actually 540 degrees, so I can do, I think it's about two and a half turns um, of adjustment, which means I can fine tune my hop up. We are shooting six millimeter plastic BBs, guys. Sometimes that little bit of extra pressure will give you exactly what you need between plopping at the ground or going towards the moon. So highly recommend this. This gets you the right tension you need. They're only $8 on Airsoft Extreme. I have probably seven or eight of them laying around because I put them in every single hop up setup that I either build for people or that I use personally. So I highly recommend that. You're just gonna break it. But yeah. So on the slide real quick. Um, again, York two or three, I don't remember which one exactly. I really like the slide. It's got the pretty pretty good cuts up front and the big port up top. Um, I love that because you can see the purple outer barrel perfectly through it. Then on the back, I have a Repro Trichicon RMR on a DCI guns, um, nylon 5.1 optics mount. This is actually my newest addition to this. I just got this this week because LA Captain Customs actually just got these in this week. Um, fit pretty good. Um, it slides in like the like a regular like a stock sight, but I actually had to trim it a little bit. Um, it is nylon. I'm pretty sure it's 3D printed. Not sure exactly, but it feels 3D printed. Um, I had to trim down the notches just to get it to slide in there um, and be a firm fit. It's pretty firm. Um, it's really on there tight. Um, it goes into the blowback unit just like anything else. Um, and it's really tight. You can get the, your screws pretty good. Don't over tighten it. Um, I did put a little bit of blue Loctite in there just to hold it because it is attached to the side and that's a pretty good weight going back and forth. But I really like this. I think it makes it more fun. I have the Cow Cow, or the, this is the 5KU, my bad. This is 5KU mount. Um, I think it works pretty good, but this actually sits over the slide and it's a pain in the ass because you have to do a bunch of screws just to adjust your hop up. So I just went with this and I think it's a cleaner look. Um, and kind of gives you more, um, more feel for it, I guess. And then my blowback unit setup is the Airsoft Masterpiece Edge, not the shortcut one, but the, just the regular one, paired with a AIP nozzle with AIP 140 spring. I don't like the Cow Cow 180 springs. Um, I've had them crack pretty much every single nozzle I've had, so I highly don't recommend those. I know a lot of people do. I personally don't. Um, take it or leave it how you want it. I don't recommend them. I recommend the 140. It's fast enough for any build. Um, and in my videos, I'm using 140, and you guys can see that every gun I have rips pretty good. I'm also experimenting with different piston heads too, versus the ones they come with. So this is the Icebreaker, the Poseidon Icebreaker. This is a blue one, I think it's a 15 millimeter. I don't remember exactly. I just picked this up. I'm gonna try this out in a build soon too. And if I'm not running, real quick, if I'm not running the optics mount, I am running a AIP cocking handle, something super simple. So yeah, that is the slide down to the lower frame down. Um, frame itself is stock. Um, all airsoft masterpiece internals, um, disconnector and everything like that. Stock hammer, I don't see the need to change it. Stock safety, stock grip safety, and stock safeties. Um, I personally don't think you need to change them. Totally up to you. Um, the frame will probably get stair coated in or anodized down the road. Um, I don't think you need to spend $300 on an airsoft masterpiece frame and or aluminum grip. 
um, that's six hundred dollars in a Griffin frame that I personally don't feel like spending. So you don't have to if you don't want to. Right. Next up is the AIP trigger. Um, this is what they had for purple when I purchased it. Um, I actually really like this trigger. Um, I have a flat trigger and I also have a curved trigger. The flat trigger feels fat to me. Um, these curved triggers feel really good and it's a pretty good break. So not much over travel. Like I hit a defined wall, I can't push it back anymore and then it just breaks. So and there's not a lot of free play with it either. Um, and then I have the AIP mag release. Um, I use an, an adapter. This was literally just a $30 part on Black Friday to make it look pretty good, in my opinion. Um, purple grip screws. Um, you gotta have those accent colors around there. Um, cow cow plain grip. Um, fitment was great for the cow cow grip for me. Um, I really like it. And it's $20 plus a $30 Abu Dhabi supply wrap. Um, but I'll talk about these in just a second. But yeah, $20 for a grip versus $300 for an aluminum grip. Sounds way better to me. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like spending $300 for a fucking grip. So next up is, I'll go over this in a second just because I have to go over something with that. Um, this is actually a Armor Works Magwell off my old Armor Works high cap that blew up like all the other fucking ones that everybody buys does. Um, and it fits pretty good. It's a little loose on the Calco grip. I'm gonna get a, I, I kind of want to get the AIP Gundam grip uh, magwell because I think it would look really good with this. I'm debating, I'll probably do a red too, um, just because I think it will go with the slide really good because otherwise I don't have that much red on it except for the slide. And then uh, Cow Cow Sear Spring in here. And then I think that's pretty much it for the frame. You guys have noticed I'm not rocking the rail. It fell off. I don't need it. But yeah, so putting it all back together just so you guys can kind of see what it looks like at the end even though you guys can see it in the video you guys can kind of see how everything goes back together which i can just align this so another reason while i'm going over this is with the rmr rm1 guide rod you can actually short stroke it a little bit more because of the spring compression so if you take your guide plug just kind of pull down on it like i do you can actually get it to compress a little bit more and you don't have to run the 4-3 plug necessarily to get it to not be such a pain in the ass to get in there. So yeah, let me put it all back together. So then you guys can see how much short stroke I actually have. Pretty good. And then just to give you guys a full view, you can see guide rod. The big purple barrel looks pretty good, and that's all together. So yeah, that is my 5.1 build. Um, high cap is you're going to keep building them. Um, so I'll, this will probably get rendition 1, 2, 3, 4. doesn't really matter. It's going to keep getting upgraded, and it's going to keep getting experimental parts because this was my first high cap, and this is the one that's going to get the most parts. So that's it. Um, on to the grip real quick. So shout out to Jejenner Decals, the sponsor for this video and pretty much all my videos. Um, we are currently working on a template for the Cow Cow Grip for completely custom wraps. We are going to be, we're looking into making our own grip wraps, um, a little bit more affordable than some of the other people out there. Not that I don't agree with their prices, but we think that we can get in the market a little bit cheaper. So we're going to highly recommend um, highly recommend them once we get that finished. Um, those are currently in production and we're also working on some other stuff, like some other magazines maybe. Um, but yeah, that's down the line. Um, but yeah, so that is my 5.1. Also, running it at about 90 PSI, I'm getting probably about 290, 300 FPS. I don't really care about FPS. The bees are gonna hit their target no matter what. So yeah, that's it. That's my 5.1 build. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Thank you. Skirt, skirt.